you would say that I don't have any adversary. I don't have any enemy at all. Maybe, yes. Or you would say that I make a lot of enemy and I don't consider them as my kind of level at all. I consider them I can go alone by, by myself. Either of them isn't actually what Bible actually saying that. The Bible uh, really appoints you as spiritual summit who can save them, who can lead them, who can really help them. The, re the reason why they call you as enemy, they call, they appoint you, they render you as your fault is because they feel like you are going really opposite direction that they really want. Either care, concern, you probably go opposite way. Or the reason why you don't consider anyone who is uh, consider anyone who is enemy, and and people would say that uh, that the you would say that I don't care about that. That is not that is not something that actually you really have the most important thing. What we are called right now is to find out the most important thing that anyone anyone really want that is spiritual truth spiritual blessing and the spiritual power people have lost and then no one could find it uh, the reason why i'm saying it is because we when we read nehemiah this nehemiah he saw the field was i mean the city the city of jerusalem was devastated the people and the wall fallen down and there was no welfare at all. And the Nehemiah, he was rendered, considered as the one who just make, it, make it, this city prosper. And that, that is what people want. But inner center, inner heart of Nehemiah, it was not that. You can say that Nehemiah's heart was actually transcending, uh, transcended well, than what people really have thought. They wanted the prosperity of the city. They wanted restoration of the city. They wanted the restoration of their economy, restoration of family or happiness, but not at all. Nehemiah, his main concern, main heart, was true restoration of spiritual blessing that people of God deserve to receive. That is the reason why we came this service. Oh, some of you already have have served uh, have served the second service too, and then you know really um, you know well about these biblical verses, right? But still, the reason why we are sitting is because we are receiving the most important thing, the heart of the, the word of God today. Why do you come to this service and want to receive blessing from God? Is it because you want to prosper? Is it because you get over your problem? Is it because you really know that God really bless in some way, some day, some way. The main reason we come to here is because we came, we come here to restore what is supposed to be restored right now, right this time. That is the main reason we come here. What is the important thing than any other thing? The people we come to restore the true life that God has given to us. The true life that never dry up, that never drain. The true life only can be restored, only can be restored through the eternal life of Jesus Christ, the true priest, by his giving blood. By his sacrifice on the cross, 
he paid up all the effects, all the things that will dry up your strength in life. When this life come into your life, when this life is enjoyed this time right now, then you will attain, you attain the wonderful eternal life from now on and will never dry up. There is the reason, the, reason, the reason why we come here and restore the blessing right now. Jesus, Jesus Christ, the true life came to me and we are enjoying right now. The reason why Nehemiah and Nehemiah came to the city and tried to seek the welfare of the city is not because it doesn't make people happy. No, that's not. Nehemiah came to the city in order to restore true power that God already have given to the people of God in the field. In all fields, God already predestined, already planned the blessings and, and the power to do so in their life. But people have lost because they lost spiritual strength. They lost spiritual power. They are bound to the force of darkness. They're bound to their lust. They're bound to their darkness. So they cannot see. There is a reason why Nehemiah got there. When Nehemiah got to the city, they really enjoyed, they really uh, received a lot of blessing by construction of the temple. They knew, just like us, only Christ can solve problems. So when we come to the worship, uh, they, they went to the worship and received lots of blessing. But their life is still a lot ahead to restore. Their life is still a lot of things to kind of change, transform. So Nehemiah went there and he had a mission to restore not only the life in the worship today, but also life in their life. I mean, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, any day. Outside of the temple, outside of the church, Nehemiah want to wanted to restore the true blessing, true identity. That is Nehemiah really went there. Nehemiah's the heart was so broken when he served King Anasasta. The reason why he was so broken is not because the city was devastated. No, that is true, apparently, but not true. It's because even though people of Jerusalem, they were suffering, but they really lost the more important thing. That is, God already has given the power to restore their city. God already planned the world of God, the how to do and what to do, but they cannot do that. That is the reason why the Jeremiah, the Nehemiah, really uh, were broke, uh, what his heart was broken. There's the same. The reason why we come here and receive the blessing from this time and listen to the word and to praise God is because we realize that God already has come to us and he already restored all the power all the authority in you. And people do not know that. People really do not know that. So, just like Jesus, Jesus chosen some, really a few, I can say that. Jesus chose some, a few, very, I mean, minimal number of his disciples, and he raised them. And even he chose and raised the disciples were fisherman who was illiterate. I mean, he, who could not read and write. Who was very angry, 
all the time, sometimes upset, sometimes have very the meaningless actions they made. But Jesus chose them and Jesus kept focusing on what they have. That is identity, the God's children and authority that Christ, the King of kings and true priest, true life already has come and with them. That is what Jesus really told them. Just like that, we came here and we just get one thing. That is, He already come to you and He already gave you full authority, full power to restore your life. So by Jesus Christ, by holding covenant, everything is done. Everything is really nothing, everything is nothing is impossible in Christ, in you. That is really what we have right now. With Christ, I can do everything. That is what we really enjoy this time. Nehemiah went to the city and she saw the people. They were powerless. They were uh, ridiculed by people around and they were also threatened. But Nehemiah, he, what he did was restoration, restoration of their heart, their identity, their authority. That is what we did. That is what we do too. Dear brothers, sisters, dear remnant, do you really uh, insist in your life? Do you really keep in your life that you had received everything in the morning when, when the time of weakness has come? Do you really insist that? Do you really believe that? That is the difference between Nehemiah and us. There's the, the difference between Nehemiah and the people. Dear brothers and sisters, you really have Christ. You really enjoy Christ. That is Nehemiah's main point here. If we really realize that, then the something happens in you. In your decision, you chose identity. The children of God, the Christ, you chose authority. The authority to pray, what will you do? The authority to fight the force of, for, uh, the, the force of darkness. That is what you have. The authority and identity is what you really do. Then you really stand against the fall. You really stand against the, all the ignorance. You really stand against all the things unknown. Probably you would feel that you go to school, you meet people, you go to a certain atmosphere you don't know. You always feel like, I don't know what is here. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what will, will, going, what will go on. You probably would, would say that, right? So you would know that there is enemy, there will be enemy, or there will be anything at all. That is true. But something very important thing is, when you really focus on what you have, Christ, what you, what you really enjoy, this identity, then you really can see something was hidden. When you enjoy the, children, the identity of children of God, child of God, then this adversary, this enemy will stand up and come to you with threaten. Sometimes it will come to you with financial uh, crisis. It, will, it would come to you and uh, threat with your future. It will like endanger your life, your future. It will come to you. But that is a time, just like Nehemiah, it is a time to build true life. True, true life. That is 
life to enjoy Christ, enjoy the authority of the children of God. That is what Nehemiah really enjoyed. Something happened to them. This devil, the enemy, they really uh, kind of make an uh, alliance with the people. When this devil comes to you and they try to ruin you, it will always make alliance. You will know that. It will come to you that what you do, I say that, it, it, what you do would be totally opposite as the world wants, the world goes. That is just like verse 19 and 20. The, these people, these people really told to uh, people of Jerusalem. You would feel like, oh, then do I have to stop? Do I have to go on? You would feel. What would you do when such a circumstance comes? The answer is still the same. God already gave you. The absolute answer, Jesus Christ, he is true prophet. He knows the something happened, the future is going to happen, that, 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 will, going, that will happen. He really knows that. He already is with you. He already works with you. That is what you really have. If we really know that, then... We do not fear. We just keep doing that. That is what Nehemiah really encouraged the people when the enemy and threaten came. They worked. They also prayed. This enemy sometimes comes to you with your weakness. They ridiculed uh, Nehemiah and people of Jerusalem when they built the temple and the city of Jerusalem. They say that, that those feasible Jewish people, the feasible people cannot build anything well. You probably know something very kind of cheap and very coarse, coarse, uh, Kind of toys in your youth, and when when you were young, you wanted some kind of very kind of the good uh, fashion of a doll or car. I mean, I mean, I mean, toy car or bicycle, something like that. But you sometimes would be disappointed. You really had probably you had disappointed too, right? Was disappointed by the quality of the the toys that you really loved, right? Sometimes it broken, sometimes it didn't work. But sometimes you would feel that you also make your study just like that. You really study hard, but you feel like, okay, what I make is not good enough. You sometimes try to make up your bed, try to keep up your schedule, try to good relationship with people, but you would end up with, no, I, I just, just quit because what I do is not always good. So I just give up. You would do that. And the Satan, devil, or your adversary, sometimes they come to you that see what you do, what you are doing, is always feasible. So you feasible cannot make something up. That is what actually people around of Jerusalem, they really ridiculed. Apparently that would be true. That is because people of Jerusalem, they are still growing up. They are, they are growing up in the gospel. They are, they are restoring Everything in the gospel by holding covenant, but still feasible. So apparently true, but absolutely lie. Because they do not 
consider God at all. They do not consider you as the one who is with God, the one who is blessed by God, the one who is led by God's power. They really do not want to admit that. So they just ridicule you. Then what would you do? What would you do? The most important thing is, yes, I'm feasible. My work is a feasible thing. But my God, He is working with me. My God is in us. And He is true Christ. True prophet is true priest and true king. And He's making kingdom of God in me and around me. And I am walking with Him. You pray and you walk again. Some people would say that what you what would make will just ruin soon. But you also say that I'm still making weak, but I am making the kingdom of God here. Through what I make, through what I do, I establish the kingdom of God because Christ has died for me. Christ has paid all things and he gave me mission to save you, save the earth. Say, not, not save the earth. Save the earth sounds like kind of the, something you loved at school, but save the people. That is true. How sure can you say that? That is our true question. If you really can say that, then you will, or you already have transformed your life into kingdom of God. You already transformed your kingdom of God. You, I mean, your life as kingdom of God. You already started. If you stopped, then please keep doing that. If you cannot do that, and ask why you can't do that, God, He will reveal you the true unbelief in you. And he will enlighten you with wonderful blessing to restore your soul and mind so that you can restore your identity and authority. I believe that you really can uh, make uh, establish the kingdom of God in your field, just like in Nehemiah, and to come to people and to restore their life also with the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for giving us a wonderful time to ponder upon your word. Many people say, Nehemiah and the people of Jer Jerusalem, they really established the temple and the city by God, God's power. But what we really saw right now was they enjoyed the identity and authority of child, children of God. They really enjoyed Christ's redemption, the God's working with them. Lord, by holding this word, we really want to go to our field and enjoy the true identity of a child of God, the true enjoying of God's being with us so that the force of darkness cannot lie us together. I cannot say lie to us. And I cannot manipulate in this life. Lord, please pour Holy Spirit upon all the remnants who participate in this worship and hold a uh, graving, hold the covenant so that you, you really make them the witnesses of Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray.